What is going on everybody? Welcome to the first video uh, for the Besides the Fire channel. My name is Connor. I am the fire keeper of this channel, um, I guess you could say. And um, speaking of fire keepers, today we are going to be talking about a announcement that came quite unexpectedly. Well, not exactly unexpectedly, but um, kind of an on time. Uh, Tuesday at like 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, I believe. Um, odd time to uh, release an update, in my opinion, about something like this, but um, nonetheless a welcome one. This is something that I've been following for a while, and I think there were a lot of people assuming that something like this was going to be coming soon, but again, it was just unexpected. Uh, that it was going to come out right now or that something would be said about it right now, but anyway, here we are. It's uh, it's finally arrived here, so uh, let's get into it here. Alright, so as you can see here, at about uh, 3 o'clock this morning, um, Elden Ring From Software released this little tidbit here, a little teaser with a picture. Um, um, basically showing that they have an upcoming expansion for Elden Ring, the DLC that everybody's been talking about, waiting for, hypothesizing, dreaming of, um, and it is called Shadow of the Erd Tree, and they have stated that it's currently in development. I don't really know what a time frame for this would be, um, in terms of release, but, um, if I was to take a stab at it, I'd probably say within the next few months, uh, we could probably see this coming out. I also believe it's probably going to be pretty sizable uh, when they release it, uh, specifically because Elden Ring is such a large game itself that uh, it would make sense to have an expansion that would feel like it, it fit properly into the game, and in order to achieve that, you would want to have a pretty sizable DLC. So it's probably going to be something that's pretty pretty large in terms of new content, explorable area, bosses, um, items, all that stuff, so I'm sure that this is just going to be a, a barrel full of monkeys here um, in terms of just bursting at the seams with all sorts of new stuff. Now the uh, the community here is well known for, the, the From Software Souls community is well known for um, making a lot from very little, and when I say that I mean taking something such as a picture here and going crazy with all kinds of, you know, taking stabs and guesses at um, what this means, um, trying to put together something to, to have an idea of what the uh, the DLC is going to look like exactly. So if we take a little picture, if we take a little look here at the, uh, the picture, we can see that we have, now this gives me, when I look at this, it kind of gives me a, a death, a sense of like the death blight, which if you've ever played the game, you know what that is. In the background, we can also see the Erd tree, which uh, it, I assume that's the Erd tree, um, which looks like it has been burned down, which would indicate to me that this would probably follow up um, the ending of the game, uh, or the, um, the generic ending of the game. Um, which is when the, the Tarnish goes through the game, uh, does the normal quest line, um, and ends the Age of Fracture. Now, you can get really involved with the lore of Elden Ring, just like any Souls game. If you dig for it, it's there. You're just peeling back the layers of an onion. But um, essentially, the lore behind Elden Ring, the world that you find yourself um, emerging into when you t when you uh, open the door to the first step um, is the world in which the shattering has occurred and the shattering is an event that occurred after Queen Marika who is also one and the same with Radagon who's the final boss of the game um, it's kind of strange and complicated but if you wanna um, look into that it's all there I probably I, I might find myself making a video about the the lore of Elden Ring but um, for right now, we're just going to try to keep this kind of concise because we could go on for half an hour, an hour, or a long amount of time talking about this. Her son was her son was murdered. Um, Princess Ronnie, who I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with, was involved. She was the one who stole the Rune of Death to help the assassins kill Godwin. And in response, Marika shattered um, the Elden Ring, and that's where we find ourselves with the... Um, with the great runes and um, the Elden Ring is in pieces, that's where we find ourselves when we um, 
get into the game for the first time. That's essentially the um, the baseline of the game. Now the next part of this picture I want to touch upon or take a stab at is this um, character we see sitting here on top of a horse that appears to be quite similar to, um, if not exactly the same as Torrent. We'll pull a picture of Torrent here. I don't know if this is just a breed of horse or something um, that's common in the game, but um, if you look at the, the horses that the other characters, like the NPCs in the game ride, some of the enemies, none of them appear to be similar to Torrent, so I don't know. That kind of stuck out to me as possibly being significant here. Here's a here's a closer image of that picture. Um, we see the, the, the hair here, which if we go to the wiki page for Elden Ring, um, appears to be very similar to uh, Michaela, who again uh, was not it was mentioned heavily uh, it wasn't like you had to really go digging for the references there are direct references to this character in the game um, but uh, you never directly see them the closest we come to seeing them is if you're familiar with Moog uh, the Lord of Blood um, in the back of his boss fight arena there's a cocoon with a arm sticking out of it um, and without getting too far into it uh, Moog it says here, as you can see here, Moog um, stole Mikella away um, in his cocoon form, um, and he was he was keeping him there. Um, I'm not really sure um, as to why he was keeping him there, but um, well, let's see. Actually, let's take a look at this. He wished to have him elevated to godhood, so I guess to um, have Mikela usher in a, a new age of his own, uh, with Moog serving as a consort. Um, however, no matter, regardless of how much blood he tried to share with him, he did not respond to Moog. Um, now, another little tidbit I found interesting down here is um, this Gideon on this uh, Sir Gideon comment down here, um, if he continues to slumber within the cocoon, all will be well. Um, so, my guess here would be that something with Mikel is going to happen um, where maybe he wakes up or he returns to the lands between, finds that um, the Age of the Shattering uh, is over. Uh, and a new age has taken place. Now, I don't know exactly, maybe we're going to get a little more um, story in terms of what happens after uh, we've beaten the game, or the Tarnished becomes the Elden Lord. Uh, there are multiple endings to the game, so um, I don't really know what ending it would tie into specifically. I would assume that if that was the case, it would tie into the generic ending, which is where the Tarnished assumes the throne, mends the ring, and ends the Shattering, and becomes the Elden Lord. Um, but yeah, that, that one quote, the Sir Gideon quote about uh, if he continues to slumber within the cocoon, all will be well, I feel like that will tie in heavily to this, because um, maybe Mikela wakes up or something like that, and um, comes back and is possibly interested in starting uh, an age of his own or um, maybe a, a challenger to the uh, the current age, the age that uh, we ushered in after the shatterings. Now I want to go ahead and take a look at some, uh, some comments here under the Twitter post and uh, on the Reddit to see what uh, people are saying about um, saying about this, what they're excited for, what people are looking forward to and um, just seeing what the community thinks about this. This is a good one here. This is what I was just talking about. Uh, Mikella on the horse, um, sitting on the horse that looks like Torrent there. This person has noticed the same thing. And that the Erd Tree does appear to be leaking something, which to me that, I don't, yeah, I don't know what that is. It looks golden, so maybe it's the remnants of the, uh, the Golden Order or, um, I don't know, but yeah, that is a, an interesting thing to point out. I don't know what that could be. Now, that's an interesting comment here. Um, somebody suggested that maybe it's two trees. Um, the Erd tree that is leaking, uh, whatever that is, the gold, um, looks like it's being uprooted by another tree, so maybe the Erd tree is dying and being uprooted by um, a new tree here. 
And this also ties into that, considering the way Deathblight kills you, which if you're familiar uh, in the game, Deathblight um, comes out of the ground and spears you through the chest uh, when you're Deathblighted, and there are some similarities to the way that that uh, tree is tilted there. Um, now, Mikella did originally grow the, uh, the Haggle tree um, for a couple of different reasons, but I don't think that's the Haggle tree, although that, that would be... If it was, if this DLC was an expansion on um, Mikella's story, it would make sense if the Haggle Tree was involved somehow. Here's something we were just talking about. Um, yeah, we don't really know the timeline for when this uh, this DLC is going to take place in relation to the story, but um, uh, Mikella Awakening. Here we go again uh, with that Sir Gideon comment there in the game, reference to Mikella. Um, Mikella awakening from his cocoon. I think that, I think there's a strong possibility that um, that's going to have something to do with uh, the premise of this DLC. This was actually my exact reaction uh, this morning when I woke up and uh, and read this. Um, I was incredibly excited. I've actually been playing. I started a second playthrough recently on um, on Twitch. I have some videos on the on this YouTube channel here of. Um, my playthroughs of Elden Ring on this new character in preparation for this new DLC, which I had a I had an idea that it was going to be coming out, um, or there was at least going to be an announcement like the one we got today relatively soon. Um, if you look at the timeline of other DLC releases from from software games, it's around the same. Um, usually, it, like a year is usually pushing it um, in terms of announcements of, of DLC releases. Um, usually six months is the sweet spot for that, but because this game is so large, um, and I'm sure the DLC is going to be made to fit that, it makes sense to me why it would be, um, why it would take a little bit longer to, uh, announce the release of it. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at some of the, uh, the Twitter comments here, um, and see what people are saying about this on Twitter. Yeah, it, uh, it seems that the general consensus of most people um, under the post here is just being overwhelmingly excited for the, um, <laughs> um, being overly, overwhelmingly excited for the release of this, uh, this DLC, and, um, you know, just excited for the content, and I think for anybody who's a fan of this incredible game, that's probably going to be the, uh, I think they all have a similar reaction. This is something I've seen people say before about Elden Ring, or saying that Elden Ring is too hard or it's too difficult, and to each their own, everybody is allowed to have an opinion, and that's fine, but I don't agree with this, specifically because Elden Ring was meant to be a like a magnum opus of From Software games in terms of... Um, it was made to appeal to a wider audience. There was a lot more... This was the culmination of all the, the hype and um, acknowledgement that the Dark Souls series had as being good games. Um, that all came to fruition in Elden Ring. And the way that they designed the game, I feel, was made... The game was made to be more accessible to people than it, it, it um, like a Dark Souls game had ever been before. Um... You have Spirit Ash summons. Uh, you have all sorts of things in this game to help you, essentially, uh, make it an easy mode, in my opinion. Um, anyone who's familiar with Dark Souls games, uh, if you having even if you have a really terrible Spirit Ash summon, if you have three to four seconds where the boss isn't paying attention, if you're fighting a boss and that boss isn't paying attention to you, he's going for your summons... That could be, it, it feels like an eternity. I mean, you have time to heal, you have time to, um, you know, if you have an Ash of War that takes a while to um, fire off and you're being staggered, I mean, it, it just opens up the door. It, it makes it, in my opinion, it makes it very easy to, um, to beat the game. Um, so I don't necessarily agree with the idea that Elden Ring is a very hard game. And it makes sense that they would make this game easier than any other game because, again, they're trying to appeal to as many people as possible um, because they put so much work into it um, and they put so much time into it. It would make sense that they would make this game uh, easier 
for the people who wanted it to be easier than um, the other Souls games. All right, um, I guess we'll just have some uh, closing thoughts here on what what we've uh, seen today. And I mean, for a picture, which is not a lot, um, it's given me a lot of ideas. So um, I feel like this sums up pretty well um, everybody's feelings when they, they saw this announcement this morning or whenever they came across it today. But um, we, uh, we have confirmed, at the end of the day, we have confirmed Elden Ring DLC on the way, so... I mean, that's a that's a good day in my book. I can't wait to see what they're going to do with it and what direction they're going to take it in. We also have more lore on the way, which um, I love getting into the lore of these games and learning about it because I love the I love the way that they design these games, the Dark Souls games. I, I love every aspect of it, so i um, really excited to see that. I'm also excited specifically because I feel like DLC is going to bring a resurgence of players back into the game. Maybe people who had put it down or beaten it. It has been out for a year now, so um, even people who were taking their time with it probably have gotten around to finishing the game by now, so um, it'll be nice to have those players come back. Um, I have some devious PvP plans. Um, really ready to give some people a hard time in PvP who might not be ready for it, so... Um, looking forward to that, and I think that about sums it up. I mean, I just it, it's really nice to have more content for a game that uh, captivated me. Um, so ho I wholeheartedly put myself into it and got involved in it. It just captured my attention really well, and I think that they did a from software did a wonderful job with uh, with Elden Ring. I mean, it won Game of the Year, so. Um, you know, say less. Thank you for tuning in today. Thank you for uh, watching this first video of mine. Um, I have a lot of plans in the future for content for this channel. There's actually another channel um, that I just set up the other day where I'm going to be covering um, non-gaming stuff, real world stuff that I have an interest in. So um, that is linked on the page here. I believe it is on the banner for this YouTube channel. So if you want to go check that out, check that out. I don't really have a timeline for when I'm going to have uh, videos up for that, but relatively soon. I'm going to be getting new equipment soon um, for recording, including a better camera because this one is kind of terrible, um, and a better microphone. So um, the quality of what I'm making will soon be uh, getting better here. Um, again, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for giving me your time. And uh, if you want to see more, subscribe and uh, turn the notifications on and stick around and Let's uh let's do it. Thank you.